And now I am pleased to introduce my very special guest. When I say, when you have a career that spans like three decades and you're still in the game, killing it, you know, Grammy nominated, photographer, you wear so many hats, singer, songwriter, producer, Mr. Will Downing. Thank you so much for joining me today. What's going on? Thank you. Thanks for having me. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully I did this right. No, I can hear. Oh, oh, I can hear you. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Stay I out of my leg. I try. I'm down here, you up here, you know. <laughs> yes, that voice, that voice, the prince of sophisticated soul, you know. That's what they call me. Oh my gosh, what a career and still going. So you know we're gonna get into yeah. this this uh album, right? You know, really? we we got we gotta get into this album. Um, but you know, first I want to just talk about what you've been going through this entire pandemic because I know as an artist, it has been so difficult for so many artists, you know not performing, not being on tour. But the best part about being a creative is that when you have idle time, you want to do stuff. You want to write songs, write right. albums. Right, <laughs> so, right, right. <laughs> and so it sounds like you've just been putting in that work during this whole time. Well, listen, all the excuses that I had for stuff that I haven't been doing or haven't done, yeah. uh, we got it done since March. So all the stuff like, hey, I'm gonna call you. Like, hey, I, I got the time. It's like, oh my god, got time now. Right, <laughs> got, right. Like, I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna do that. Remember that hey, picture you, you were supposed to, to put up? There you go. So my place looks like a palace. And in the meantime, <laughs> hey, well, listen. That's right. You know, I, I I couldn't front anymore. I couldn't lie anymore. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to it. But right now, I'm I'm just like, you ain't doing nothing. So yeah. I done caught up on movies, uh, you know, done some I work. I think I have and watched everything on Netflix, um, just on demand, everything. But one thing that I have, uh, you know, I've been trying to just cultivate my businesses and work on myself, you know, that self-care, because we're so busy running, running, running. We're working, yep. working, working. Um, and I know you were working, you know, during the pandemic as well and writing. Were you inspired? to write or did you have to like pull it out of yourself you know because that's how it could be listen, sometimes listen Vic I ain't good looking and smart like you so brother got to <laughs> keep you know got to keep doing his thing so when this whole thing happened I was already prepared I mean fortunately I have like a little studio here in my crib so I kind of cut all my vocals here anyway yeah. uh so the only the thing was I just you know, put pen to paper got to write in, you know, consistently and came up with this album. So all of this album was done during this pandemic. So it was, you know, it's it's yeah. an, another album for me. We Frankenstein it together, but you hear it and you, yeah, your, like your mind's going to be blown. We Frankenstein it together. Yeah, we kind of threw well, it together, you know, we pieced it together, but it well, works. It sounds amazing. Yeah, the, the song got it. Okay. So, I, wait a minute. I was like, say, say that again. The song garden. The okay. song garden. The song garden. <laughs> you I know, we it. are going to get into the album. I want to dig deep into that. Um, you know, but I want to talk about some things that, you know, I always ask folks because self care is like a big thing for me. And I know, like I said, so many people have been going through things um, right now. So it helps when, you know, you see someone who has clearly had a great career, busy life. Um, it, it helps you to know like what keeps them motivated, what keeps you pushing, even when I say chaos is all around and people ask me that all the time. I'm like, I, I try to invest in myself. Cause if I don't have right. anything to give, you know what I mean? Then, then I'm useless to anyone. Right. Correct. Correct. Well, you know, they say that you're nothing without your health. So you can have all the money in the world and, you know, get up out of here because you're not taking care of yourself. Right. So, yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, the, the whole thing, this key, the key to life, I think is balance. So, you know, you work a little bit, you play a little bit. So the, the thing about this pandemic is that it's kind of made us all have some balance. I mean, once you get past the, the stress of like, oh, I don't know where my next dollar's coming from. Oh, how are we going to eat? You know, once you kind of get yeah. past that, then, you know, you kind of get back to what really life is all about. So it's about a little bit of work, 
a little bit of play, a little bit of work, whole lot of play, <laughs> however it is. I like that. But, <laughs> I like that right there. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> like I was the like, when one. is my next vacation? <laughs> <laughs> and your next vacation is a staycation. <laughs> <All right>. Right, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You just dreaming about a beach, okay? Pretty much. <laughs> Thinking of a master plan. Yeah. You there know, you go. Have, have you ever had a time where you didn't love what you did? Because, you know, I do radio. I've been doing radio it, it, almost 20 years, not quite yet, but there are there have been moments where I'm just like gosh like I'm just not motivated or I'm I'm like is this really what I want to do and then as soon as I crack that mic it reminds me of why all right <laughs> there you go it's just it's, it's an unexplainable feeling but it's just like this is my purpose this is what I'm meant to do in this part of my journey well Vic you stole my answer because that's what I was gonna say <laughs> uh I'm, I'm I'm looking at your paper like well, what she what she write what she what she write that's what I'm gonna write that. <laughs> no, I mean listen, we all have our periods of time where that happens. Um, yeah. You know when when I, we were on the road and when I say we me and my band when we were working quite a bit like nonstop like every week you know four four days out of the week you know yeah you'd have your nights where you're kind of like what the hell am I doing <laughs> you know this is killing yeah. me I'm not even enjoying like like this has become a job. But then, you know, you get up on the stage and you get to look at the people's, you know, their faces and how they react to the music and the elation and the comfort that you bring to them. And then it kind of makes it like, OK, yeah, so I'm supposed yeah. to be doing this. And then when I see brothers, you know, brothers and sisters out there doing real work, when I'm driving down the highway and I see someone, you know, okay. beating the concrete, I'm like, I take my job. I, yeah, I love yeah. my job. I got it. I'm like, good. let me go, let me go ahead and put in a little bit more work. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause what I do ain't really work. You know, I'm I'm good. I'm it's good. It's never work when you're having fun though. When you're having right. fun, it's just kind of right. like time flies and you're like, well, what day is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, right. you're having fun. But I know that there is no better feeling than than being out on the stage and getting that energy and that love back because I'm sure that's what feeds you as well but do you still and I know it, it hasn't been the same in quite a while now but when you do step out on that stage and you do see folks singing along with you and just showing you so much love does that fill you up well of course it does I mean listen there's a lot of people that do what I do yeah. that haven't had any hits at all I mean haven't had semi hits you know, so to to not have even a, a um, not even a semi, <laughs> it's just like a like, bit. <laughs> like like you you just had a you just had a joint out like on glass, you know, on <laughs> you just performing in the living room. <laughs> you just okay. performing. Look look at me, you know. But yeah. to walk out on the stage and to see people, a sea of people first and foremost that paid their hard earned money to come see you, because yeah. when I first started out, my my father used to like joke me all the time because he didn't think he was like, yeah, hey, you I. You know, you are. He come to a show. I, I swear to you. Because my your father, father was, I, I do know a little bit. Because your father and your mother, you had one that worked really, really, really hard. Right. And then you had one that was just all about education. There so you go. when I heard that, I'm like, oh, well, he, he well-rounded then. He's he, yeah, he from yeah. both sides. <laughs> yeah, but neither, but, ne but neither one of them wanted me to do this. <laughs> so I, mean, I can so understand what, that, right? Yeah. So, so check this out, Vic. I would be on stage and my father would come see me perform. And, it, you know, obviously at first you all start out, everyone starts out in clubs. So yeah. I'm playing like these little small clubs and he'd be there, he'd be looking bored to tears while I'm watching the show. Like, oh, man. Uh, you know, looking at his watch, like, okay. And then when I started playing like the bigger joints, like I think I did, I did Carnegie Hall one time and my father was sitting in like the middle, cool. in the middle row and he's watching me and I'm performing and I see my father doing this. Like, Y'all, y'all like this? Yeah, what? Y'all like this? I'm like, really? yeah, come on, man. I'm like, and, I, I'm, and I'm sitting there. And I'm going to say, I thought you were about to say, he's like, oh, like this is oh, my no. son. Oh no, no, no! Even before the show started, I saw him, he, and he was like, yeah. So yeah, who are all these people here to see? Who else is on the show with you? I'm like, Dad, it's just me. He's like, like people, people will forego eating to come see you perform. <laughs> like, you know what? No one humbles you more than like your parents. You know, no one. <laughs> if you need a no one, check, okay, go to your mom's house or go. Mm -hmm. They will let you know. 
in a in a heartbeat (laughs) in a in a sentence you ain't worth two dead flies take the garbage out (laughs) exactly (laughs) so talk about some of the artists that inspired you growing up because i know that you music wasn't your first choice okay you were into basketball you had your mind on other things anything besides you know music and yeah yeah yeah. i'm sorry no, no, no. So talk about like who in, actually inspired you coming from like not even trying to do music to now, you know, just a superstar. Well, I don't know about the superstar part, but I hard okay, working, but I'm a, hard you, working black man. And listen, hard, <laughs> hard working black man as opposed to hardly working black man. So hard working black man. Exactly. All right. So uh, for me, as I said, you know, in the last question, my parents weren't about this you know they were about education and and finding yourself a job and put in 20 or 25 years and then retire and get the gold watch and you know get the you know the pension or whatever but i chose to do this so um the people that inspired me were like teachers first and foremost uh, all of my music teachers they saw something in me that i didn't see uh as you mentioned before i had my eyes on other things I, like most young men uh, and you know everyone has dreams and aspirations, but then at one point reality kicks in. So I knew I wasn't going to be playing no hoops professionally <laughs> at some point. And then it was like, well, you know what? I don't know what I want to do. So I think I'm going to go into the service and I was going to go into the Marines. Mm. And I got there and I was too young to go in and they were like, you got to wait a year. And so I said, all right, cool. So I, I ran into an old teacher of mine and he was like, yo man, um, I got some scholarships to the school you know, you should, you should go, you should check it out. And I was like, yeah, but I'm gonna go into the service. They're like, in the meantime, just why don't you just check this out? And he got me a scholarship to go to college. So I ended up going to college in Richmond, Virginia, a school called Virginia Union University. And I studied music there. What was that? I said, shout out to Virginia Union. Oh, I thought you were gonna say you went to Virginia Union. I was oh, like, no, no, what'd no. You, like, what'd you say? <laughs> no, I what'd know quite say? a few people that did. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's what threw me. It wasn't, uh, no, definitely a shout out to Virginia <laughs> Union. But like I said, I went to Virginia Union. was like, yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> what doing with you and I don't really care about what you <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm probably way uh, years difference. But um, yeah, so all of my teachers saw something in me that I didn't see. And then my heroes were like people like Luther Vandross and, and Al Jarreau and Stevie Wonder and, and Anita Baker. And, you know, so all these people sort of influenced me musically. So, you know, God has a way of, what, what, what's the old saying? They say man plans uh, and God laughs. Yep. And, so I, is that I, the truth though? Yeah, yeah. That, I had plans, but God was kind of like, ah, eh, stupid. Over you here. Know what? <laughs> you, you, know. <laughs> you pretty much stepped out on faith though, because if I if my memory serves me correctly, you didn't stay at Virginia Union long. No, no, I stayed there and, for about a year, right? Yeah. And, and then and I transferred to another college. Yeah. Pursued your dreams, you know, after that. Well, I, I wouldn't even say it was your dreams, it was something that you wanted to do and continue to fall in love with it and was like i gotta make it work well you know what yes and no i mean i've been very fortunate in my life um after i came back from virginia and i came to back to brooklyn which is where i'm from and i transferred to brooklyn college right and while i was there i joined a band uh and we made a demo and the dude who was the leader of the band this dude named it don't laugh his name is tony bennett but a hell of a keyboard player's name is Tony Bennett. Say, okay, but that's I know. Nah, 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 <laughs> not I left right. my heart in San Francisco, Tony Bennett. <laughs> right. <laughs> this was brother Tony Bennett. Brother right. Tony. <laughs> brother Tony. So we made a demo and he sent it out and someone heard it and they liked my voice. And they offered me like an opportunity to sing with this other group that was recording. So I ended up recording with this other group and then so on and so on so on and so it just kind of just kept rolling so yeah. i wasn't even like pursuing it like a lot of people do some of it just came my way but i just happened to be ready you know you got to stay ready you, you got got should, to shouldn't have to get ready ready sitting yeah. on ready at that sitting on ready yeah i love that i love that because you know it wasn't an easy road for you no. to take especially no. with you know your parents not really supporting Hoarding what you did, right. but you knew that it was something that you know you wanted to do. Um, right. So, can you talk about? Because I know 
it didn't kind of catch here, right? In mm. the US. Thanks for the reminder. Thank you for the I'm reminder, sorry. Vic. No, no, no. Thank you for the no, reminder. This is an important part. No, this is I, important. I just, I just got out of therapy for this and you just <laughs> took me right back. Thanks, Vic. Thanks, Vic. Well, I'm sorry. I have I have a few questions that are probably going to tap tap those <laughs> nerves a little bit. Come no, on because with it. Come on. A lot of times people give up after that. Like they uh, just like, you know what? It ain't for me. It's not happening. But you continue to pursue and continue to work. And I always say you keep getting no's, no's, no's. All you need is that one yes. Right, All you need is that right. one moment. And right, so when right. that moment happened for you, can you talk about the feeling, that first feeling of hearing your record on the radio? And this is after you had already put out a project before, but here in the US, like hearing your record on the radio and that success just happening, did you feel a sense of relief? Like, what was that for, What was that like for you? Well, once again, it was one of those things where my plans didn't work out. I uh, released a record in 1988, which was self-titled, Will Downing. And I'm expecting like our local station to jump all on it. I'm expecting not to be able to walk around the corner of my neighborhood. I'm like, yeah, I'm the man. Like, nah, it didn't happen. <laughs> so yeah. what ended up happening was I became like a success overseas which I hadn't even really thought about, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And the album went gold overseas. So I released a single in America. I did, um, I did a, a copy, uh, a version of uh, Free by Denise Williams. Right. And it did nothing. But I released a song over in Europe called A Love Supreme. And that, you know, people went like nuts for it. So I find myself, I uh, found myself going overseas like every other month to perform and to work and do whatever. So I had a lot of success overseas, nothing in the US. And then by my third album, which was in 1991, an album called The Dream Fulfilled. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm looking up because I'm looking looking for it on the wall there. So yes, it's there you somewhere. Better, you better yeah, it's up, it yes. so, yeah. <laughs> it's up there somewhere. So yeah, it's up there somewhere. By the third album uh, that had I Try and I Go Crazy and, Can I say and that's all kinds of songs. Can I say that's my favorite that you you don't understand. I was listening to that before this interview, just so I can get, get in the vibe. Oh, which one? Uh, which song? Do, do. I can't wow. even do it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Listen, wow. everybody wow. knows wow. that. Whoever I Vic. have, I'm going to try to sing. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sorry, Vic. 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 I, uh, Vic. I, I need to hear that one more time. Let me hear that. Let me, let me. It took a lot to get down there. Okay. Your, your chin went down to your chest. It did, because like, I was... <laughs> I was like, what's, I was like she looking for coins? What's on the floor? <laughs> to do. I can't I even... I can't, I can't. <laughs> there you go. Now. Right, gotcha. <laughs> Boy, you sound like we running for... We sound we running for our freedom. <laughs> freedom <laughs> is up north. If I could just get there, you are I see Dr. freedom Bella. right there. Oh, I see freedom <laughs> right there. I see freedom right, right. I got the scarf on too. Yeah, you got the scarf on. You know, I got the black uh, history. Yeah, all you got, all you got to do is. Vic, all you gotta do is look around. I see oh, freedom right. Oh, no, your eyes were wide though. <laughs> right there. Oh, I'm not fooling with you today. You gonna make my lashes come off? Can't you know, I, I I I took all types of notes on you. Okay. Did you? Okay. Uh, yes, because I always want to like make sure I try to tackle a lot of different things that instead of like trying trying to think of a whole bunch of questions <laughs> that I have. Write it down. You smart. Um, yeah, yeah, but smart. but you know, I want to know your reaction to hearing some of the things that people say about you. So, someone said voice like velvet that goes straight through your bones, a hundred percent entertainment, a voice that makes your whole body shake. Oh. You created your own lane, a range that broke the mold. When you hear your peers you know, wow. talk about you like that. How does that make you feel? I, man, that's, that's an amazing feel. That means I need to send out some money. <laughs> you need to give me, you need to give me the name of all of the names of all the folks that said that. And I need like cash apps, sell, 
you know, let me, right? Okay, let me see. So send you some money, send you a piece of chicken. Let me send you <laughs> Right. <laughs> a fruit basket. You get a fruit basket for saying that about me. No, that that's incredible. I mean, it, it's it makes you it makes you feel validated because this is a business that um unfortunately what you did before does not carry on carry into what you do now so you're always judged by a current performance so you could you know you could hit the ball out the park a thousand times and strike out once and everyone remembers the strikeout <laughs> it was like remember that time you struck out I was like yeah but i, yes. I had a thousand home runs they're like yeah but you struck out on this one it's like exactly okay so it, it's good to be you know and it makes me feel like i'm validated like you know i've done something right and I've left a legacy that regardless of whatever happens from here on out, I got a legacy of music that people have appreciated or did appreciate or will continue to appreciate uh, that will outlast me. And that's the whole point of it. Absolutely. And you know, I, you know, I, I called you the Prince of Sophisticated Soul, okay? Uh, <laughs> And so you have a lot of you have a lot of nicknames, but you know what made me chuckle <laughs> oh, is your. <laughs> I, was, I was about to say, oh, I, I, I didn't know what you was gonna call me. <laughs> oh no, I want you to Negro tell the Joe. story. <laughs> okay. I want you to tell the story of how you got the nickname Chocolate. <laughs> okay. okay, all right. So I was playing at Newark Symphony Hall with the Whispers. All right, so I'm opening up for the whispers and I'm doing my show. And oddly enough, I'm singing your song. I try. <laughs> so I, I'm singing I try. And during like the most intimate part of the rec of the song, somebody screams out, sing that song, you black bastard. Come on, chocolate. <laughs> and all of Newark Symphony Hall lost their mind. Fell out laughing. Wow. All you saw were folks just ah, so shoulders. You know, doing all this. <laughs> How do you even recover from that? <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> you don't. You just you laugh along with it. I mean, because it was funny. It was funny as hell to me. I'm it was like, like wow. right on point, right? It, the timing was perfect. Everywhere I would go after that, it would be, hey chocolate, what's up, chocolate? <laughs> Sing that song, you black bastard. Oh, that was great, great. Great. <laughs> Gosh. Well, you know, okay, so a little bit down the line, uh you had I go crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And you said that if you don't perform that song mm -hmm. at your concert, uh -huh. you might have some folks waiting for you outside. What? <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, that's that's one of the songs that if I don't sing it, there's a problem. The song okay. that if I really don't sing in concert, if I don't do the duet with Rochelle Farrell, the mm. song itself, whether she's there and or not, if I don't do that song, you gonna have it's a gonna be some. Ooh, it's gonna be some furniture moving. <laughs> it's gonna be some furniture moving. It's gonna be. <laughs> like, I love that though. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's because you put your soul you can you definitely can feel uh your energy whenever you perform whenever you sing and you put a lot of your experiences you know in your music as well so is it fair to say like you can look at you know your musical journey or, or some of the songs that you write as almost like a journal and i know it's like that for a lot of artists but mm. typically, you know, you kind of, you had your friends telling you crazy stories and you're like, oh, that'll make a good song. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they inspire a lot, but before your own experience, um, is it almost like a, an outlet and a weight that might be lifted from, you know, outside of therapy, because therapy is always needed, but that's your sort of therapy to kind of get through Absolutely. whatever that situation that wow. is exactly that's exactly what it is i mean pretty much if you were to take uh a lot of songs that i've recorded over the years you could put you know you could piece together a puzzle as to who i am as a human being and what i've been go or what i had gone through in my life at that time so i kind of lay it out on the line without having to get a dude you know to I li i'm lying on the couch and you know i'm telling them all my problems so i i just kind of lay it on the line and yeah. oddly enough, there's a lot of people out there that have gone through the same exact things 
uh, that I've gone through and it's therapeutic for them as well. So, you know, it makes them feel validated. It makes them feel like they ain't completely out of their mind. Like, wait a minute, you know, okay. I went through that. <laughs> you know, like you did too? Like, absolutely. And that's so, the best yeah. type of music. Yeah, Songs absolutely. that you can relate yeah. to. Yep. And you're like, man, your song helped me, you know, get through a breakup. Your song helped me to forgive someone. Yep. Your song, you know, yeah. uplifted me. Yeah. Um, and just knowing your story and knowing the journey that you've been through. Um, I do want to touch on uh, 2006. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it was such a, it was a very, very um, dark time for you. Mm -hmm. um, and just be, let me make sure I say this right. Is it polymyositis? You, you were close. I'm sorry. Oh. I, I I have to apologize to you because when you were saying it, you was like, "I'm gonna try to say it." I'm gonna I'm try gonna, to said, say it. Yeah, and I said, "I said no, you won't." You, you won't it, right? <laughs> Don't doubt. See, don't be doubting me. <laughs> hold on, Cash App. Let me say you. <laughs> yes. <One or> two. <laughs> oh, I, I mispronounced it. Okay, so how do you say? It? No, no, you were actually. Oh, right I said it, it right. Probably yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So I said I, I didn't think that you would. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm sorry. I thought I was yeah. like one step. So, oh. See there? No, nah, no, nah, I was betting against you. You know, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> always bet on black, baby. Okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was taking odds, like fifty to one. <laughs> um, but you know, that <laughs> just the resilience, like that, is such a a story that I related to. Not going through something, um, as far as like with my health, but just in life general. Because mm -hmm. I remember you talking about how you know, you were bedridden, you uh, were in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. um, and you really didn't know if you were going to make it at some point. Yeah. And mm -hmm. one thing that you said, you, um, you said that when you have everything stripped away, and all you have is your family and God, all the important things about life come into perspective. And yeah. I related to that because there was a time in, you know, when I wasn't doing radio, and I wasn't doing um, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And mm -hmm. when I tell you that I was so blinded by, you know, I have this car and I have this bag and I have this, and it was all the material things and, you know, and I lost it all. I mean, mm -hmm. lost it all, lost the house, yeah. the car, that everything. Mm -hmm. And I lost it all. And I tell the story often, but I lost it all because I felt like God was saying, you're losing focus. You need to yep. focus on me. And so he took everything away from me. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was only my family and God that pulled me out of it. And now I've gotten everything back times 10, you know what I mean? Right. And right. so just hearing your story and knowing that you went from being in a hospital, not being able to walk, being in the bed, not knowing if you were going to sing again, had to get, uh, I had to fight them to not put a feeding tube, you know, yeah. to, to mess with your voice. So then going to record a whole song, a, a, you know, album and really pushing through mm -hmm. what, and I know God had a lot to do a with lot. It. Had a lot, <laughs> had everything. Okay, lot there. Had everything. there we go. Okay, but God, gave you, but God gave you that strength and, and mentally you had to be in a certain space where you felt like, all right, I can do this again. So can you talk about how it felt like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm going to make it to, I'm getting back in the studio and I'm going to do this album. Well, I went through a, a roller coaster of emotions and a lot of it is what you said. I had, I was doing well, we were cooking, <laughs> we were, we were rolling. We, the, the schedule was like packed. I was someplace every week, you know, we were making a couple of nickels. We was doing fine. And everyone kept telling me in my family, I was, my mom especially, my mom kept saying like, hey, you know, you need to slow down. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm getting mine. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm getting this paper. You know, so we can't be in two places at one time. I said, watch me. <laughs> you know, we were, Ooh, we were right. everywhere and I was working. I was having a good time. And then I started slowing down. And she was like, yeah, hey, baby, you need, to, you need to slow down a little bit. I was like, mom. I got this, I'm getting this paper, mom. And you know, right, and eventually, eventually, like God kind of like said, ah, mm. <laughs> he hit me on the chin. He said, I was trying to get your message. You didn't want to listen. 
you know, I tried to get a message to your mom to give to you. You didn't want to listen. So I tell you what, I'm going to sit your ass down. And he sat me down in a major way. Um, and when you're, like you said, when you're in a hospital bed and you cannot do for yourself, it's not like I was in a hospital bed and I can get up and like, oh, let me go look out the window. Let me go, let me go to the bathroom. Let me go walk down the hallway. It was like, no, I was in a hospital bed. I mean, that's it. If I had to go to the bathroom, it was like push the button. Two people would come along and they put you on a potty. You, I, I didn't see a bathroom. Mm. I didn't see a bathroom, a real bathroom for a year. Everything that, that happened with me happened like 10 steps from my bed, my hospital bed. It's like I got in the bathroom, they pick you up, they sit you there, they pick you up, they wipe you off. You couldn't right. even wipe yourself, you know, put you back in the bed. So I dealt with that for a year. So in between that time, scared to death, first and foremost, did a whole lot of praying. When I didn't get better as quickly as I thought I should get better, I call God everything underneath <laughs> his son. I, got, I cursed him out like you not believe. And then I'm sure he kind of looked at me and said, okay, you done? All right, you, you finished? You're lightweight? All right, now you show me some, some, some grip. You show me some fight. You show me some, you know, some resilience, you know, within you, I'll bring it back. And so I, I gave it all, I surrendered it all. I, you know, I negotiated or I call it, I, I negotiated the best deal that I could with God. <laughs> I like I'm that. like, I'm Negotiate like, God, it. I negotiated, Lord, I, like Lord I tell you what, you get me up out of this hospital bed and out of this wheelchair, that dude that I was before, I will never, I ain't never Jeez. gonna be that dude ever again. I promise you. I said, I'm, I'm gonna hook you up. I'm gonna be your biggest promoter. I'm gonna be like, I'm like, I got you. Just get me up out of here. Yeah. And in about a year and a few months, uh, stuff started happening. It was like, oh, I couldn't do that yesterday. And something happened the next day. It's like, oh, couldn't do that yesterday. Couldn't do that the day before. Right. And then slowly things were starting to happen. I was able to like move a little bit. And then of course, you know, it's not like I got up and started walking and running. I had to relearn how to do everything. And I was down to like 125, 30 pounds, 130 pounds. I had to like get my weight back up, had to build my muscles back up, had to learn everything again. But slowly but surely, I was able to kind of get back on my feet and, you know, boom. When you were, <laughs> even after you, uh recovered and, and got yourself together. Did you ever think at how you were inspiring the people around you and maybe changing um, how, how they move for them to see you, you do that? Cause I think that, you know, I know that my story has helped people knowing that, yeah. you know, you can, you can be in one space, but if you work and put your mind towards and get a, have a positive attitude, then I can, I can bounce back too. I can, did that ever well, yeah. play in your mind? Like, well, yeah, absolutely. My story is helping. Yeah, well, absolutely. Because someone did it for me. You know, someone would, would like write and they would bring the, the materials to my room and they would, you know, I'm sitting and I'm reading what this guy went through. It was a white dude. I can't remember his name, but I remember him going through some stuff. And, and before I was hospitalized, all the things that he had written had happened to me. Like I remember falling at home and I remember not being able to get back up. And he had written like, yeah, this is gonna happen to you. He said, when it happens to you, don't get discouraged. He said, while you're on the ground, just go on and pray. <laughs> you're already down there, so go on and pray. Might like, as well. I'm like, <laughs> I hadn't thought I of it thought that of way. <laughs> but you know, it brought me a little bit of laughter. It brought me some, you know, it, it lightened the air of things. And as things would happen, um, it made it easier for me to kind of live with. And then I read at the end that he had gotten back mm -hmm. to, you know, the person that he was, or maybe not quite, because I don't think you ever get back to you, but he had gotten back to the point where he could live, he could function, he was not falling. I mean, he didn't need all these assist, all this assistance. And that was my hope. So I'm looking at this dude, I'm like, well, if he made it, you know, if I work hard enough, I can make it. And now people look at me and they write me all the time. And I know I have friends that have called me to say, listen, I know someone that's going through something and it sounds similar to what you went through. Can you call them and, and can you rap with them a little bit? And maybe you can help them. 
And so that's what I do. So, I mean, at least once a month, I hear from someone who is dealing with some sort of debilitating, you know, ailment that might be similar to mine and I'm their hope. So, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm doing what I negotiated with God. I said <laughs> I was going to do it. So yes. I'm, I'm trying to be a man of my word. Well, you know, so many people are going through, you know, things right now, whether they lost their job or they're right. dealing with sickness or the after effects of COVID. Can you give them some inspiring words while I have you here? Well, I mean, listen, we're all in the same boat. It's not like, you know, you're, it's a personal attack. <laughs> you know, you right. can't take it too personal. Think it's just whole, happening to you. Right. Yeah. The whole world is shut down, you know, so we all have have to find a way. We all have to adapt. We all have to take this time to kind of recharge our batteries. We all need to take this time to really find out what's important in life for real. Mm. You know, it ain't, just, it ain't just about your job or it ain't just about some new clothes or new pair of shoes or a new piece of equipment. It ain't all about that. You know, so you should take this time and to kind of reconnect with you and reconnect yeah. with God at the same time. So yeah, take this time and use it wisely. And when you come and when we all come out of this thing and we will, we all, we're not going to be the same people that we were. That okay. is guaranteed. Absolutely. And oh, the party that we going to do. I don't know oh, if going to the grocery <laughs> store without a mask. You cook out like, everything. The, right, the, the little things. <laughs> right, you walking through the store, no mask on. Right, exactly. This, right, this is my, this my whole face. This is what my face looks like. For real. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, I want to... Um, you know, while we have a, a, a few more minutes, I want to talk about the new album because about if one album. thing, if it's one thing that you're going to do, it's going to write some music. It's going to sing some songs, okay? Because you got your gifts back and, you know, we are just so <laughs> happy that you are still, still pushing forward. So talk about the new album and what it means to you and why this project is so special at this time to release. Hold on, let me, let, let me do my, my 2 a.m., uh, uh, you know, push the product, buy one, get one free type thing. Hold on. <laughs> Bam, this is uh, yes. the song oh, hold, on. hold on, I got one better for you. Bam, how about Oh, well, there you go. See, I'm, see, old school. <laughs> New school. See, old school. You look, you got to hold up a cassette, you know, an eight track. You know? Oh, don't think I'm not going to look for the vinyl. Okay. Don't think I'm not going <laughs> to listen. <laughs> I'm here for it. All right. So talk it. about the song garden. Okay. The song garden is a seven song collection of songs that will satisfy and will be the soundtrack to anything that you need. Okay. So we have songs like right where you are right where you are is 120 beats per minute it's an old school house record that's what it is with a great it's message moving. that there. gets you moving it's just uh, uh 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 and i'm talking about music by the way uh, uh, uh. <laughs> right so. it's the other songs for that it's, a, okay. it's the other song other songs for that other songs for that other songs so right. the songs for that right is, i have a song on here called chocolate now, okay chocolate chocolate yeah, I was gonna say something else, but and it's actually in the song, so I'll say chocolate with nuts. So uh oh, okay. yeah, um okay. <laughs> chocolate Listen. is that sexy song. So yeah. we got that on there as well. I've got a song for people who are going or trying to propose to a loved one and they don't know what to say. I got a joint on here called Say right, Yes. All they can do, just just play the song and get down on one knee. In the words of my late grandmother, put tone, put tone, <laughs> put tone. <laughs> Put tone, say yes. Put tone. Put yes, tone. Put and, it, and you ain't got you ain't got to say nothing. Just get on your knee, you know. Get the ring out, and, and then after you know, just go like this. After I finish, saying go like this, you know, and and then look up. <laughs> hopefully, you know, they'll say yes. So the no, right. so the song is called "Say Yes." Uh, we have our socially conscious song, which is stand up. You know, try to encourage people to get involved. Um, don't just talk about it, be about it. Don't let these young folks take all of the, you know, don't let them do all the work, you know, right. come on in, you know, folks my age, get involved some way, shape or form, you know, uh, and what's Why going on out here in the world. important for you to put into, uh, to the mix? Because you say you have a, a say yes, sexy song, and then you have a, you know, you said you have a lot for everybody. So was that important, that socially conscious, you know, song, you wanted to put in there as well? Listen, 
we've just got out of four years of dealing with Agent Orange and his cronies Man. that constantly reminded people that look like you and me that we weren't worth two dead flies to them. Mm. And we need to remind them that, you know, we are here, we built this country, <laughs> the majority of it, we built, <laughs> you know, yeah. and we want our rights, we want our respect, so stand up. That's what the song is. Stand yeah. up, get involved. So, yeah, so being that we've all been home, you know, we've all been watching the nonsense in real time. So, yeah, how can you not get involved? How can you not feel like, you know, you want your voice heard? So this, this is my contribution as well. You know, my youngest is 24 and she's in it. So she's like, oh, always right. like, like, dad, dad, you need to 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 <laughs> The you younger need generation like, is so energetic. And, and let me tell you something. You said uh, new, the new school is, you know, digital. Man, mm -hmm. they are making some changes. Absolutely. Okay? Absolutely. I'm pr proud of them. To the, <laughs> to the actual yep. street. So yep. definitely, <laughs> yep. definitely want to push forward with that. So I know all of the songs are your babies. Okay? Yeah. It's like, it's like a child. <laughs> like, like you can't pick yeah. your favorite. You okay. know, you know the general artist answer. Yeah. What's your favorite yeah. song? They're like children to me. <laughs> You know, you got you got to hold your heart with your old. They're like, what child is tugging at your heart today? <laughs> today, well, it's funny. I, I'm gonna say today is is chocolate <laughs> because I don't heard from some of my boys because I didn't play. I really didn't play this record for like too many people. Uh -huh. So I heard from a brother that's a bass player, and he called me. He's like, I picked up the phone. And he was like, "You stupid." I said. <laughs> I said, what? what? <laughs> he goes, man, you stupid. He's laughing. I said, uh -huh. what's up, man? He said, you know, he said, I purchased the album. I said, well, first and foremost, you are to be, you are, you are to be applauded just for that alone. Right. <laughs> you know, just buying the record. He was like, man, I'm listening to the record. I'm grooving to this song, Chocolate. And I heard you say something in the record that like, damn, they made me crash my car. Uh -uh. Because the song is a spoken word song. Mm. And basically what it's about is, it, it kind of starts off the girl, what you need is some chocolate. And I break it down to all the things okay. that chocolate does that satisfies women. And uh -oh. there's a there's a line in the song. As I said, I actually spoke to it earlier. I'm not going to say it twice because I don't want my mom to smack me upside my head. <laughs> uh, but there's a line in the song that will have you falling on the floor. And if you listen to the whole interview, whoever's listening, uh, you already know what it is for those who are just uh, coming on board. There's something very funny in the song that I say that almost made him crash his car. But the song is sexy as <laughs> F. <laughs> oh, so definitely play Chocolate tonight, y'all. It's my favorite song today. My favorite song today. <laughs> I love that. All right, so any last words about this album, what it means to you? Um, definitely want everyone to go out and get it, purchase it, okay? Don't be him will up like, yo, can, can I just, you know? <laughs> no, we want to support Listen, our artists, but. That's right, I'm not going to be able to do it. Can you do it? I'm not going to be able to do it. Can you do it? I'm not going to be able to do it. I can't do it. Uh, we've been out of work. You can't. Exactly, I need money. exactly. I need money. <laughs> Absolutely. So my, my parting words is, is first off, I'm grateful for all the people that have supported me and my music for the last 32 years. Because I started in, uh, well, actually, okay, 33 years. Uh, now that we're in 2021, I started in 1988. So this is my 33rd year recording. This is my 24th album. And, you know, I'm just appreciative to still be here doing what I do and able to make a living doing it. So thank you for that. Um, to stay in contact with me, you know, hit me up on Facebook. I'm Will Downing Singer. I'm Will Downing 3 on Instagram. Uh, what am I? Everywhere? The website. Come to my website. Come to <laughs> willdowning.com. Um, if you want to purchase the product, you want to purchase a hard copy, a classic, you know, a, not, you get a new school version, hold your phone up or whatever you were holding up. Yes. You get, get a new yes. school version, get the MP3s or the downloads or whatever it is, or you can get a classic <laughs> version, a hard copy. <laughs> If you want, we love a classic version. Yeah, okay, don't get let's a classic get into version. It. Hey, listen, if not, they make a hell of an earring. They make hella earrings <laughs> if you get two of them. 
or yes. poster <laughs> or whatever. But you can come to my other website, which is theprinceofsophisticatedsoul.com. And uh, I'll send you an autograph copy if you buy it there. So there you go. The Prince awesome. of Sophisticated or come to willdowning.com and get yourself a hard copy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Will Downing, thank you so much. I had so much fun talking to you. Vic, this was my just pleasure. You're such an amazing talent. And I want you to have 30 more, 30 plus more years. Thank you. Uh, in this thank you. Game. And Vic, Vic, before we go, I just got to uh -huh. hear it one more time. I just got to hear it one more time. Oh, we here. I try. Did I try? I try. Wow. Do. Freedom is coming. Just keep singing. Is Freedom is a, it's close. <laughs> it's close by. <laughs> We're going north. <laughs> We're going north. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Well, well, Downing, uh, you know, I'm going to bring my DJ back oh, in here. Zigga, 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 zigga. Hey, we listen. are going to, we're going to play a little Will Downing to uh, DJ Face, <laughs> let me tell you something. DJ Face, you messed me up. I had to write something down. I wrote down, you did Georgie Porgy into yeah. uh, a lovely day. I'm like, I'm stealing that. Right. You don't hear that mix? <laughs> I'm going. I'm, you, saw right? me, you saw me type it in there. You saw it. I'm, I'm I stealing look, it. I respect you bringing it to my attention and telling me that you're going to steal it right in front of my oh, face. It's better than look here, it the other way. DJ, DJ Face, I'm telling you to your face. <laughs> I'm going to thief you. I'm thiefing you. I'm thief. Him a thief. Him a thief. He thief me. <laughs> Will Downing, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. And My pleasure. Ah, much success and much love thank to you. you. Thank you. And to you guys as well. Go thank get them, DJ Face. <laughs> <laughs>